Hello everybody and welcome to another video on the channel. Um, I do apologize for my uh, long break, um, but I'm back. I had to sell some cameras. Um, I was expecting to get some others to continue doing reviews and other technical videos that I want to bring to you all in the future to help you understand um, and help you start and continue in this journey of uh, film photography. Today I will be talking about how to use the light metering system, these little thingies, into the Zenit E, ES, ET, EM and 11 and Zenit 10 models. Uh, before that, um, we will have to speak um, basically and non-technically how cameras work, film cameras at least. Um, the film camera itself is no more than a light um, a focusing device and the film it's a light saving device vision is no more than um, the light objects reflect the light from the sun the light from lamps whatever based especially the sun because we are in the universe and planet earth and the light of the sun impacts objects and it reflects to us and that is uh, what we see, that's vision. Um, I'm not going to enter into a lot of details about vision. You can look uh, videos that explain that better and with more technical vocabulary and in a clearer way. But basically, mm, film photography is no more than painting with light or capturing light of the objects. And by doing so, we invented this thing that is the camera, that it is a light focusing um, device and the film that it is a light storing device. Let me, let me explain. Light from objects um, uh, bounce things and get channeled through the lens. The lenses work like a magnifying glass because there's no more than glass there you can see i am directing light with this lens so that's the function of lenses directing light that light then enters into this dark room that is the camera and when you um release the shutter in your camera, when you push the shutter in your camera, what you're doing is exposing film to the focused light through the lens, like that. Lenses, um, film is no more than a plastic sheet uh, covered in a gelatin emulsion, in a chemical gelatin emulsion that is light sensible. Uh, that means that it chemically re reacts with light and it absorbs that light and chemically remembers it, if that makes sense. Uh, that's why you cannot take raw film and expose it to light because that chemical emulsion will absorb all that light and all you will have is a blank thing because it has absorbed all the light. Um, so remember that when you take a picture, your film is right here facing this way and light that objects reflect um, come into the lens, uh, into the front of the lens. The lens focus that light, channels it. The camera is no more than a miniaturized dark room in here. And when you shoot, you simply are exposing that film to the channel light through the lens and that's how film cameras work now as i mentioned um, film is uh, bath is, is is covered in a chemical emulsion that is light sensible uh, technicians and scientists uh, have rated that emulsion that sen that sensitivity of the of the chemical and they have made a chart and they have created a standard that is the one we use today, the ISO standard. That is the international standard for um, light sensitivity, for, for 
or the light sensitivity of materials. So ISO is no more than a standard. It's an, an standard measuring for the light. There are other standards such as ISA and DIN, but we don't use that mm, those anymore, kind of, because ISO is kind of ISA. Uh, but the thing is, you can still use DIN, you can, you can still use ASA, but what we use today is ISO, and that's what films are rated today at ISO values. And now, how do we use this exposimeter? Very simple. We have to understand what it makes and what it doesn't make. In order to get um, the right exposure for your picture, you need to uh, count four uh, variables. The first one is the light that your object is reflecting towards you. The second one is the light sensitivity of the film or the speed of the film, the ISO number. Um, the speed of the shooting mechanism and the obstruction of your lens. What that means is the light, uh, the first variable is the light that reflects and it's entering the lens, it's being channeled through the lens. The second, the sensibility of the chemical in the film. Uh, higher ISO number means more sensible and lower ISO number means less sensible. Um, the speed of your shutter, um, uh, the the amount of time the shooting curtain takes to open and close fully, and your lens obstruction, which is the F value in the lens. Now, how this thing works, this mysterious wheel works. This is a non-electronic uh, um, light emitter in the sense that it doesn't have any uh, chips, processors, and electronically, electronical computers that um, calculate light. Cameras with electronic uh, exposure uh, meters, with electronic light meters, um, that is cameras that utilize uh, a battery to power the light meter, um, uh, what they do is they take the four uh, inputs, that is light, film speed, camera speed, and lens obstruction. They calculate, they make a calculation with all those values and give you the right answer for making the correct exposure. This is a non-battery powered uh, light sensor, which means it doesn't make any uh, computerized calculations. What it what it does is simply takes the amount of light uh, the sensor is getting and translates and translate it to a, a known uh, chart. So this type of of uh, light exposure, light metering systems, um, simply utilize two inputs. That is the light hitting the sensor and the film speed you give it. That is why in this type of sensors, uh, if you have a, 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 a filter in your lens, you have to uh, know the value of light that lens is taking from you and you have to compensate because it's not measuring the light obstruction. I will, ex I will explain that in a later video when I compare this exposimeter to electronic one, but just remember, in this type of cameras, this type of metering system, if you have a, don't use filters on your lens or at least compensate the use of your lens to this reading because it is not reading. So how do we use this type of sensor? The first thing is you, of course, load your film into your camera and you check for your ISO value. And after you have loaded your film, you calculate your ISO value. There you can see the two scales. DIN is on the right window and ISO is in the left window. Mm, you can see that there are numbers inside each value, each window, I'm sorry. And what you do is you 
search the closest number to your ISO, if you're using ISO, or your DIN, if you're using DIN. Everybody uses ISO because it is the international standard, so we will use it ISO. If you know how to use DIN, perfect. Um, let's suppose we have, a, we have loaded a 200 ISO film in the camera, and we're going to put it to the closest number to 200. You see, we have 130 and 250, so there is no 200. What we do is we put it between 130 and 250, which is the in-between in value, right there. You simply use this line and you match it to your number. Um, 200 is in the middle of 130 and 250. And you do it so. Uh, the same if you have a, for example, 400 ISO value. There is no 400, so you put it between 250 and 500, right there in the middle. But uh, that depends on your film speed, and remember that this type of cameras only their exposimeter goes from uh, ISO 500 to ISO 16. So this is an, a limitation. Uh, have that in mind. Um, so as I said, pretend you loaded a 200 ISO film you set it to 200. Until you finish your roll, you never move this because you cannot change your ISO value until you change your film. Why? Because the ISO uh, value is the light sensitivity of the film you have loaded. You cannot change it until you change your, your film. So don't move this until you finish your roll. After you have set the ISO, you are ready to shoot. You simply take your camera and you point to the object you want to, uh, to shoot. And now I'm going to turn on my artificial light source. And you simply align your camera to your object. Your object reflects or emits light shoot it to the sensor right here and the sensor gives you the reading it produces the amount of light in this needle movement so if i block the light sensor you see the needle moves if i expose it to light it reacts so make sure you don't have your light sensor blocked your light sensor is this thing when exposed to light it reacts when light is lower it reacts to to the amount of light so that needle moving is uh, basically a mechanical production of the light input then what you do is you move this knob this knob right here note that when you move this knob you are not moving your iso value because it is a separated knob but it is integrated in the same place. For moving your ISO, you move this upper one, and for moving your needle, your loop server, you move the other, the down, this bigger knob. Remember, you don't move your ISO until you have changed your film. Now, what you do is you have your shot in front of you and you align your camera to it, and you take um, this uh, knob, and you move it and make the loop match the needle right there. They have matched it, as you can see, there. And then what you do is simply um, match them, they are matched. And then what you do simply is read the numbers it'll give you. And what that means is, on this part, these numbers are the obstruction of the lens, that means your F value. And on this side of the knob, the shooter speeds. So for our, we have measured our light for our shot and we simply choose. So in this case, we could take a 125 shutter speed with a 4 aperture in our lens, with f4, right there. And then we simply shut. 
Oh, but I don't want 125. What other options I have? You could take 2.8 and 250. This lens doesn't have 2.8, so, you know, search another combination. Or you could do, for example, 1 over 60 at four, uh, 5.6. You, know, you should you then change your speed, 1 over 60 and 5.6 in the lens and shut. So, basically, how you use this system is, you load your film, you enter your ISO value in the knob, moving the upper part in here. Your ISO value is on the left window, you align it. Say for example, 400 ISO, you put it right there, between 250 and 500, because it doesn't have exact numbers. So you simply play with the numbers I put it there that will be 400 ISO then I load I take my subject uh, I measure the light of my subject and then match the needle with the loop which is this down other knob I match it and then I search for the value of the, then I search for the values, which are the F value, that means the lens obstruction in here, these values from 32 to 2.22, and then my shooter speed values, which are in here, in the other part of the knob, 500, 250, whatever. So in this case, I have matched it, my needle I have loaded and I simply make my reading at speed to 50 right here I can use a 5.6 diaphragm so I make to 50 the speed and a 5.6 diaphragm and I shoot so this system is basically a manual uh, aligning system that is calibrated to read the light um, it's an old system, uh, but it's very effective. It works. Um, I hope this video helps you understand how this works more and that you have understand how to use it. Uh, if you have any questions, comment down below and expect for more videos soon. Uh, thank you and see you in another one.